Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Hello. And welcome. And welcome. <laughs> I guess I'll just uh I'll just let you do the intro, I guess. <sighs> That's it. <laughs> That's not it. Hello and welcome to the third day of um Rising Sun previews with um uh, my illustrious guest. <laughs> this is a takeover now. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Let's talk an hour about Rising Sun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, so yes, day three, and we are here to talk about debt and events. Rising Sun revisits debt introduced in Empires. See? I... Mm, is it... I, I don't. I, yeah, I, I, is it like a... Because like a, there's Imperial stuff in Rising Sun? Ooh, that makes sense. Hmm. The short version is you can buy some cards without paying for them yet, but, you, but can't buy more stuff until you've paid off your debt which you can now do at any point during your turn, incidentally. No more screwing over black market. Nice. Yay! <laughs> Huzzah! Wunderbar. Uh, okay, so here are three debt cards. Here we go. Ooh, Would you like to take the first one? A mountain shrine. One sun. One, like, what is that? Omen token? Prophecy token? Yeah. One token. I don't know. Sun, I think, is fine. Plus two money. You may trash a card from your hand. Then if there are any action cards in the trash, plus two cards. So this person also did the River Shrine art. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. I mean, I don't know. I feel like, okay, again, I'm like, okay, you can't miss this assignment. Again. I have rem to remind myself of Way of the Otter. So this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay. <clears throat> and? Um, it's a five debt cost card. And you may trash a card from your hand. And if there are any action cards in the trash, plus two cards. Ooh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's strong. Yeah. So. Huh. So, okay, putting, so yeah, sorry. Well, putting aside for a second that this is an omen, which you know, like we kind of talked about this day one, that it's hard to say how that will affect you know the power level of the omen cards. But uh, this one, like even if you just disregard that, seems yeah, like you said, quite strong. So you could compare this to priest. It, you can open it because it's a debt cost. So even though it costs five, you can open it on your or or three coin hand and priest gives you plus two coins and you trash a card um this is may trash which is you know may, you know a little bit more flexible but early on in the game obviously you're gonna trash mm -hmm. uh, but like you you trash an estate um that's good tempo early on there aren't going to be any action cards in the trash unless necromancer and yeah okay yeah barring necromancer yeah um but then like as the game progresses like this can basically turn into plus two coins plus two cards if you like mm -hmm. if there is an action card in the trash um which you know is a isn't is not a combo that really exists well there's it? mercenary yeah i was gonna say isn't yeah. that's not a common okay yeah common mm -hmm. effect but yeah mercenary is the other card that does this mercenary requires that you trash the cards mm -hmm. though um, and obviously mercenary is a good card, oh. but that's not mostly because of the, the, the oh, coins right. and the cards. But. So this is like, as soon as there's an action card in the trash, you will draw, you will just draw two cards regardless. So it's like goat heart in that way, yeah. right? You don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's not conditional on trashing. Wow. So, so you, like plus two cards, plus two coins is, is, you know, is solid. Like you'll be able to continue to make use of this card, like after you've you're done trashing. It, it's a single card trasher, so it's not gonna be super fast at trashing, so you'll be trashing for a while probably anyway with this. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it's a good it's a good tempo trasher. Um, it's not an amazing tempo trasher because the fact that it costs five debt, if you compare that to Priest, again, um, I mean, it is a downside like in some sense, right? In some ways it's an upside because it's more flexible like with when you get it and how much 
you're actually paying versus how much debt you end up accruing and, and that sort of thing. Like it's it's obviously it's easier to get this card than it is to get priest, but it is also harder to get this with you know certain other things depending on what you want to open with. Like if you if you have a four three for example, you can either open this card on the three coin hand and then have like extra debt, or you can open it on the four coin hand and then not be able to take a three and whether that's good or not you know it's just gonna depend but yeah i mean it seems to gel nicely with cheap action cards that you then can trash so you activate it sure or that would just trash themselves naturally in any case mm -hmm. um like i mean okay so on a kingdom with goat like it's a little bit less enticing to have the trasher in the first place but i was thinking about like pixie you know where like pixie's relatively likely to just end up in the trash regardless true true um <laughs> yeah. the feast combo if you're playing with the first edition of base <laughs> um also lurker yeah lurker a lot of <clears throat> enablers yeah. well lurker is interesting because you can both like turn this card on and then potentially turn it back off um you which... turn it back on for yourself and then turn it off for Ide your opponent. ideally <laughs> ideally yeah <laughs> mm-hmm um, but yeah, I think this is pretty strong. It's like, it's a little hard to say, well, even, even putting aside the Omen, it's a little hard to say exactly how strong because yeah. how it's going to interact with, like how the, the combination of like the debt and the timing when this is going to come online seems like a lot to try to, to, you know, anticipate. But I think, I think you will open this quite often, especially like, because you can, you can do things like, I mean, I said on the one hand, like you have to take two debt if you open this, like as your second card on a four, three, but on the other hand, it means you can open it with another four. So like, that's quite nice because this is like in the opening, this is roughly a four cost effect. I would say like, I mean, it's, you know, because it's comparable to priest, mm -hmm. like, so, I mean, it's doesn't have obviously the like chain trash money thing that priest does but that mostly doesn't matter in the opening anyway and it also gives you know, like the sun token so yeah it it seems pretty strong to me mm -hmm. um do we have any other five debt costing cards that are not like not triumph not <laughs> annex no, no well, annex, annex is a yeah, yeah no no um it's 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 you know you have the three the three eight cost from empires you have the three eight cost eight debt cards mm -hmm. you have engineer for four you have fortune for eight coins and eight debt and then you have uh triumph for triumph for five debt as an event you have wedding that's four coins and three debt you have donate donate for eight debt and you have dominate no sorry no. that's not that's not debt. what am i talking about annex? um yeah annex uh for also mm. eight debt mm. <laughs> annex and donate being the same cost is pretty amazing <laughs> <It is>. yeah <laughs> that's true yeah yeah um looks like a, a fun little card yeah it's, it looks good mm -hmm. all right so next up we have daimyo remind me again what that is so this is like a a member of the nobility that's like pretty high up my like when what i what I looked, I was looking up like the feudal structure to try to come up with names for the mm -hmm. guessing game. Mm -hmm. Like I already knew daimyo as a term, but I didn't know exactly where it fit into the hierarchy. But what I saw was that it was basically directly below shogun. Um, so like it, that, I assume that means you know somewhat similar to like a duke maybe. Okay. Um, but I don't know how and much male. equivalence you can. Oh, probably. I don't. I don't know if it has to be. But. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and I, I don't know. It, I don't know if the Japanese system works like you know, at least in terms of naming convention, like the the like the English one where you have like the male and female versions of them, or how that works. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in any case, it's a six cost or six debt cost action command plus one card plus an action. The next time you play a non command action card this turn, replay it afterwards. So this is that's interestingly worded. Yeah, well, this is basically um, the non-duration version of flagship, right? Mm -hmm. So you like 
Yes. Yeah, it's it's you're not it's not actually enabling you directly to play the other card the way that most throne effects do, but flagship does not. Um, but it like it is giving you an action back and a card back, which most like throne effects also uh, do not do. Um, so you could like you know it's also kind of like royal carriage except less flexible, where like you could just play a bunch of these um in a row and then and and this is also true of flagship but flagship doesn't have the plus action on it so it's harder um but then again you can store the flagship up over multiple turns but in any case you can play a bunch of these and then you can play one action and you can just go you know like ha have it played a whole bunch of times mm -hmm. so um yeah the i i think um yeah this is it's so it's 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 overall I would you know describe it as less less flexible than royal carriage, and then like both less and more flexible than flagship in terms of cards that allow you to kind of just like replay some other card potentially over and over and over. Um, I mean, it should be like I think it should be pretty good. I, six debt is a fairly high price. Like it's more expensive than uh, carriage or flagship yeah um but it is also like the fact that it's not a it's neither a stop card nor a terminal is yeah. nice yeah of course it doesn't give you the two coins that flagship does but um yeah i don't know like the fact that you have to find something and like it doesn't you can't really like, this doesn't really have the village effect that other thrones can. I mean, Royal Carriage kind of has this limitation, too, but in a different way. Um, flagship as well, I suppose. But, like, you... Um, like, if you end up wanting to play, like, a smithy, right? You can No matter how many of these you play before you play your smithy, you're never going to get plus actions after you resolve your smithy mm -hmm. chain because mm -hmm. nothing gives you plus actions, and there's no... You, there's no like throne throne equivalent with this um i mean unless you're like you know okay, targeting but... a throne room or something but... okay can we can we unpack this sorry i'm like i get easily confused with these cards but shouldn't you if you play a daimyo on a daimyo shouldn't you get more actions because no, you play it's the a daimyo? non command action card oh they don't right. affect okay, each other i see i see i see that's yeah. like that's why that's there right it's okay. the same as flagship okay okay is flagship a command card yes huh. and that's why Huh. It's so that flagships okay. don't replay flagships. Okay, 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 okay. Um, all right. But it doesn't say non-duration, so you can have all the fun you want making your life as confusing as possible with this in Mastermind. No. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you misunderstand. I don't want that confusion. <laughs> okay, I see, I see. Yeah. Um... You can just like play a crown, like play three daimyos, play a crown, and then you right. have. And then you just get three ways of the pig because, um, because you, enlightenment is in play. <laughs> 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 no, but yeah, okay. I mean, it's like in general, these kinds of effects are strong, right? So, like, I expect that this card will be strong. How strong it is, I think, um, is like i think it's going to have more hmm. this card is going to be more reliant on trashing than something like flagship where you can just like or royal carriage where you can just play them and then get them out of the way and then wait until you mm -hmm. you get the thing yeah that you want to line it up with and here you can't you like can't, if it, you need if to you find play it, it you don't play anything else your turn ends yeah it's it's gone i guess i should say more dependent on either having trashing or non-terminal draw um where non-terminal draw could be like well you have a lot of village effects and then you play your smithies or whatever but like the like ba basically ways to increase hand size you know with, with significantly without ending your turn like some way to line it up like it is it is definitely like especially compared to royal carriage um it is definitely more reliant on you like having a way to line things up rather than just being able to to like like wait for you to line it up like royal carriage like royal carriage bridge is an example of this where like you could 
So Royal Carriage Bridge by itself is a is a combo, right? You can play a bunch of Royal Carriages mm -hmm. and then you play one bridge and you call the Royal Carriage on all the bridges and you buy all the provinces. Mm -hmm. You can do that with this card too, um, but you do have to find the bridge, like the turn that you play all your daimyos, which is not true with Royal Carriage Bridge. Um, on the other hand, like the fact that, the, of course, that the daimyos are drawing cards, like as you play them, d will help with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, and, and I guess the other nice thing about this, like w with Bridge in particular or a similar thing, like with Bridge Troll or whatever, compared to um, Royal Carriage is that you c it's easier to use this along the way as you build. So like with Royal Carriage, especially if you're doing Royal Carriage Bridge without much support, like you kind of just want to leave the Royal Carriages on the map so you mm -hmm. don't have to draw them again. But with this, well, I mean, you're going to have to draw them again anyway, so like mm -hmm. that doesn't matter. But also, like, along the way, like, you're playing them, and well, you can now, like, double play your whatever, you know, your bridge, or if there's some other, like, relevant card. Of course, this also doesn't combo nearly as well because it doesn't, like, get cost reduced. <laughs> so that's a downside True. of deck cards. True. Um, but that's just with the interaction with one card, but just kind of trying to illustrate some of the, the differences. Um, in any case, I mean, these, like I said, these kinds of effects are generally strong, and I would expect this one to be strong too. But it's, it, I, in terms of whether it's going to be stronger or weaker than other similar effects, I, I, I don't really have a strong opinion on that right now. Not yet. Not yet. Yes. Um, in terms of the art, I think it's, um, I will just assume that the, the artist did their research and this is um, all uh quote unquote authentic and yeah i don't i not really uh it doesn't excite me but it also i feel like it's just uh yeah it's, it's good it conforms <laughs> to my expectations yeah, yeah in terms yeah. i mean it i don't fulfills the the brief i would say well i yeah i mean i just didn't mean in terms of like i have seen other things you know that with like the costuming like this or ah, whatever which mm -hmm. i mean doesn't necessarily prove anything but <laughs> yeah yeah i mean one would hope yeah. Okay. And then the last new card is Artist. Uh, eight debt cost. So um, the most expensive of the set today. Mm -hmm. It's plus one action and then plus one card per card you have exactly one copy of in play. Mm hmm Ooh. Okay, okay. Well, eight, eight debt is pretty expensive. It's like mm -hmm. it's the City Quarter Overlord. Yeah. Royal Blacksmith price point. I'm not sure. I can't really... Like, the exactly one copy of in play kind of trips me up. Um, so I don't... I mean, it, it sounds very strong um yeah i don't for now i mean there are reasons why the cards are the way they are right so i'm sure there was a, re a like a version of this out there where it wasn't exactly one copy mm -hmm. um and this is what we ended up with i don't know yeah i can't i i don't have a clear feeling about this just yet what mm -hmm. do you think I'm pretty surprised by that restriction. I like so this card is it's 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 an it's non-terminal draw and I guess like you don't you know you don't want your non-terminal draw cards to be just like totally busted because it like trivializes drawing your deck um you know like kind of like scrying pool or whatever mm -hmm. but I guess exactly one copy in play is pretty limiting I, right like, and it seems it seems like it would be very easy for this to just be like end up being like a lab which is very expensive for eight debt yeah I mean, and I, like you can like to me it sounds like you never want to have more than one artist in your deck because like the second artist i don't know uh, no, well, that's second, that's an exaggeration yeah but. i think i think I could see wanting to have like a second one if for no other reason than you like you, the first one is like the real kickoff card mm. and then the second one is like it doesn't draw as much but that's okay because mm. you draw most of your deck maybe mm. but like to yeah. me it's like okay it's gonna be better than like Royal Blacksmith Royal Blacksmith is real bad but like like 
if you compare this to City Quarter, and I mean, City Quarter is a really good card, to be clear, but, mm. like, just having, like, cards in your hand is, like, um, like, less, it's less restrictive, and it's more, like, um, like, it doesn't, dem so, like, if you, or, like, I may, maybe, you know, like, compare it to, like, Menagerie, I don't know, like, the, having a bunch of cards in play already means that you already have to have done some of your drawing and potentially gotten like some of your plus actions in place so that you can play terminals and like i don't know like you you won't be able to play most of the time you won't be able to play treasures like before you do this so like you can't get the you, you like the uniques out no. of that and like if you think about like you know how challenging it can be to pop like magic lamp now like getting you know expecting this to draw like magic lamp says you know six uniques in play right so expecting this to draw like six cards that that's that's like a high bar like draw mm. six it would be like mm. pretty insane yeah but then again like this is an eight debt card that isn't going to be good early like it's not really going to do anything early in the game like it's very unlikely like you know, to draw anything like uh, to, to be anything but a cantrip in, for like a little while at least, um, and so like you're investing in this like later in the game, and but then later in the game you tend to have like more copies of cards, right? Right, right exactly. So like huh. I don't know, like the it, you know, how often is this going to be like drawing you more cards than like you know, or as many cards as like hunting grounds, for example? And like hunting grounds is terminal, but like the terminality of hunting grounds in a way seems like less of a restriction than this does to mm. me yeah i don't mm. know i i don't think this card is very good i mm. I, I could see that it may like i could see it being the case that it would be too good if it didn't have the restriction but as it is with the restriction i think it's I think it that kind of like royal blacksmith it is going to end up being over costed yeah. i think it'll be better than royal blacksmith um but like and, and i could be wrong and maybe this is like like this isn't really something we've ever had to manage before in this way like you yeah you have to manage it for magic lamp but the the what you're trying to do and when you're trying to do it is different so like my intuition might be wrong about this but my my first reaction is that this is going to be like too finicky to be worth the high price that you have to pay mm -hmm. and I like i want to say that this would be fairly costed at like mm, six well of course it costs debt i don't know like would it be fairly costed at five? Probably not. It's probably too easy for it to be better than lab. But like six, like, I don't know. I'm not sure it would be good at six. Kind of an awkward thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would be very curious to know the the development stages of this card. Yeah. Yeah, and like, you know, the... It's just like it's so often the case that you like okay I have these villages and so I'm gonna play village a bunch of the villages that I have because you know my villages are coming from like one pile yeah and so now that's not gonna contribute to like drawing with your artist and yeah like, you might happen to get one vill the one of the villages in play and then play the artist but like now unless you've gotten some other stuff in play it's still only gonna draw like two cards which is just so expensive for. Or like so underwhelming for a debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Know. I will have to. I don't know. I'll have to play with it and like and see. Maybe here's a way to like a way to think about it is like if you play a village, a terminal, and then this card, and it draws three. Is that worth eight debt? Like, I mean, that's as many. It's an activated menagerie for True. eight debt, which yeah. mm -hmm. which makes it like that makes it feel bad in comparison, but like. Menagerie is a really, really strong card when you're activating it. But then again, like this, like Menagerie, this has these constraints that you are going to have to work for it. So it's not going to just be like mm -hmm. draw. Like if it was, if it would, it's just, if it just said plus one action, plus three cards, eight debt. 
like how would we feel about it plus one action plus plus three cards just straightforward better <laughs> yeah? yeah i don't know if i would feel better about it for a debt but i don't know well i mean would you would you want to buy would you want to buy this if this card said plus one action plus three cards like would you feel like would you feel and it still cost eight debt would you feel like okay this is a strong card or would you feel like no, no this is this is weak no okay yeah, that's my intuition as well. You? Yeah. If it, what about if it said plus one action plus four cards? That would be better. Yeah. Or like plus two actions plus three cards. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Lost <would>, menagerie. <laughs> I would pay a debt for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that that's right. So that's like kind of where my mind is going. Is like for eight debt plus one card. I, I think or sorry, plus one action plus three cards to uh to my mind is like not really getting it done for eight debt i think if you go above that so it's either plus one action plus four cards or um plus yeah plus two actions plus three cards or something then it then it's like okay yeah now it starts to be worth it i mean it is worth noting perhaps that like in the opening like having being able to it, you know even if it's eight debt which is a lot like you you would you would always be able to open this and so if it was sufficiently strong to sort of without any conditions then that might be like weird and that might be one reason like not to print that card but putting that aside it like it just yeah i don't know i guess i'm not expecting this card to be able to like to 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 hit to consistently hit that threshold of like plus one action, plus four cards mm -hmm. to where you feel like it's worth the eight debt that you paid for it. Although sometimes, I mean, sometimes you're going to have to do it because it's like the draw that's available. And unlike Royal Blacksmith, which just, and sometimes like, there's just no way to make it work. Like it probably won't be the case that this like straight up just like fails to work as draw mm -hmm. very often. Like you'll probably at least be able to get it to be a lab if not an activated menagerie but yeah it just does feel very expensive for that mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm very curious to see this and and play mm -hmm. okay so uh donald x does have some notes about these cards mountain shrine another omen is a trasher that powers up as soon as anyone's put an action card into the trash or a necromancer as you said Daimyo is the cantrip version of flagship you didn't know you needed. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and, yeah. Unlike flagship, it lets you play the card you're going to repeat with no other tricks needed. You can go Daimyo, Daimyo, Mountain Shrine, and you're playing that Mountain Shrine, Mountain Shrine three total times. Artists can draw a lot of cards, provided you have a nice variety of cards in play. You know, I feel like that's overstating the case. Because it's like, <laughs> you can have a nice variety of cards in play, but if you have multiple copies of them, it's yep. no good. Yep, <laughs> so. yep, yep, yep um yeah all right we also so rising sun also revisits events so we're gonna have a look at three of those okay and we stay with the dead theme we have another a dead event that is called continue once per turn, gain a non-attack action card costing up to four coins return to your action phase and play it plus one action and plus one buy. Ooh. <laughs> okay, okay. That's pretty powerful. Yeah. Um oh, turn to your action fit. Okay, so right. we another one of those. The trend of the the returning to your action phase events. Yes, yes. Well and and not just events, but like effects, right? Yeah. So like, you know, because it, it goes yeah, along yeah, with yeah. like cavalry and villa yeah yeah um i'm not a fan of the art uh it looks kind of bland I, I i don't know what this person is doing i think they're spinning something oh I, oh, okay yeah that makes sense so they're probably like oh i don't know what this is in english but like when you mill i don't know do you say that like no wheat or whatever yeah um i think that i think the wheels for that are usually in the other orientation mm -hmm. like tumbling top over bottom rather than spinning around the side like 
spinning around the side like that makes me think pottery, but that doesn't look like a pottery no. thing. So I don't, yeah, I don't really know. Butter churning, I guess, would be something that, go, but but that doesn't look like butter churning either. I don't know. Yeah, it feels like, and like this building just looks so empty. And then, yeah, I don't know. I don't like the, yeah, n not for me. Not for me. Anywho, um, yeah, the effect that, yeah, it seems like something that you will just want to do. Oh, never mind. It's, it costs a dead. <laughs> so you you probably won't be able to do that this every turn from the very beginning. But as soon as you have like a reasonable deck, I would say mid game, you probably just do this every turn. Hmm. I don't know. I think you might do it turn one. Like I'm trying. Like it depends on what you can play with it. But like. Okay, but you can't do it every turn. Right? No, no, you won't be. If you do but it turn start, one, okay, odds yeah. are you won't be able to do it turn yeah. two. Though you yeah. might. I mean, depending if you if you have like a if you have like a five two and you're paying three debt and the card that you um you end up with three debt like just off of like you you paid five coins right and if the card that you continue with gives you like a couple coins like now you will be able to afford to do it again the next turn. Oh, that's true. Okay. I, and, it, and it, like, so the thing is, like, mm -hmm. this seems really good. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, like, really, really good. Yeah. So, first of all, like, in, just in terms of, like, sort of the economic value, right, you're, you get a four, a, a, up to a four cost. Now, like, sometimes you're not going to take a four cost. Sometimes you're going to take a three cost or something. Mm. But, like, for simplicity's sake, you know, you can basically model it as, like, you get a four cost card for four debt so that's break even except that it's a little bit better because it's a little bit more flexible right mm -hmm. and then the other four debt is paying for the fact that you get to innovate that card and get plus one action and plus one buy on top of that i mean you which don't is... need the plus one action and plus one buy when you start no but like in general like mm -hmm. you like if you compare this so like um this is it, like in the way that like villa gives you like extra actions when you gain it because it gives you the action for returning to your action phase, but then you can also play the villa and get the the plus one action there. So it's, and the plus one. Yeah, mm -hmm. like this is similar. It, like whereas like you know cavalry for example like just gives you the buy. gives you the buyback or like launch gives you an action, but just one action. So if you like ran out of actions, you play the you play um or you buy launch. You get one action back mm -hmm. so you it's not like it's a village effect but it's it's not as much of one as this where you get the action back and you get to play whatever card you gained mm -hmm. without spending an action on it mm -hmm. so you, it's like essentially like this is like a bustling village effect mm -hmm. and it gives you plus buy mm -hmm. and it like gives you this like card you know like that you don't have to draw like like it gets you you know, play immediately. Like, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this seems really, really good. And I think you're going to do this, like, all the time. Like, it's it's super, like, the, the it's super high tempo, except insofar as you end up in debt. But, like, if you use this to generate, like, econ, then that offsets some of that effect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, imagine, like, Turn, Would you do this? Oh, sorry. I was going to say, imagine turn one, you, like, continue a bounty hunter or something, right? So you, like, get to immediately exile an estate, and you get, like, three coins back. So you spent you spent, you spent spent four of the debt, base essentially, to get your four-coin bounty hunter, and you mm -hmm. spent, like, you, you, you get, like, a rebate of three of that back off of the, mm -hmm. like, the estate that you exiled, and, like... And, and you have an estate that's like taken out of your shuffle that's like you're not going to see mm -hmm. like after you shuffle like and you could probably just do this again on turn two and bounty hunt it like a like a cop or something like i don't know i mean maybe there's something better to do but like it, it, it's like crazy <laughs> it's so good <laughs> is it like when you when when like villa is in the kingdom would you still continue uh well you wouldn't continue with villa like you wouldn't like 
continuing by buying or like continuing by gaining a villa seems kind of silly when you can just buy the villa unless you didn't have the money no exactly yeah yeah if you didn't if you didn't if you didn't have four coins then sure continue and gain a villa if you want to like do that but like otherwise no, 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 you... no, no i'm not saying like do you ever continue a villa i'm saying like if villa is in the kingdom does that make continue less good yes yes okay yeah, because like sometimes you don't need like 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 specifically buying villa is cheaper than continuing and it gives you basically the same effect if that's what you need mm. similarly like you could continue a cavalry if you care about the plus one action but if you don't care about the plus one action then you might as well just buy the cavalry if you can mm. um but like and and that's one reason why like as much as i'm saying like oh man this seems like good in the opening it's not as good as it is later when you care about the plus one action and potentially the, the buy as well, right? Like turn one, you're not gonna care about either of those effects. And it's still good because of the tempo of like gaining and playing the card immediately. I mean, not it's not always gonna be the case that you wanna buy this turn one because like sometimes the impact isn't high enough. Mm. Like, but, uh, but I think it still absolutely can be good in the opening, but like later on, as you said, like once you start to care about the other effects, it's going to get even better. Mm. So, yeah. And I'm assuming the reason it has non-attack is because of that. Like, if you get, like, turn one, just, Ugh. like, militia or Ugh. something. It's like, oh. yeah. Or ninja. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Ah. yeah. It, turn one ninja with this would be especially disgusting because it would trigger a shuffle. And then you would have the ninja on the bottom of your deck and would be able to immediately play it again turn two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <"Ugh!"> mm -hmm. <laughs> So... Yes, I imagine that's why it says not attack. Yeah. Um, but even so, like, it seems really, really, really good to me. And I think you will use it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, two cost event by the name of credit. Gain an action or treasure costing up to eight coins plus debt equal to its cost. Oh. That seems like a that's that seems like a dominion card that should just exist that should have existed s sooner. It feels like a super I don't know what's the term like a quintessential dominion card. <laughs> I, like mm -hmm. this I don't know. It just feels right to me. <laughs> I can't really explain it. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. This just yeah. It makes sense to me. Um. I like the art. Beautiful. No notes. I look at the horse. I love it. Okay. I wonder why it's up to eight. Like, why are we not allowed to use this to gain platinum? <laughs> mm. Mm. Is there is there like something else that's going to come out in this set that makes there be some reason mm. that? No, you got to gain those peddlers. Well, but peddler, you can get with this i um yeah i yeah i guess i just but the thing is obviously with peddler by the time you can afford you, the credit the peddler yeah, doesn't not, cost you're anything. not gonna do this with peddler. you could do it like with prince or something right like that's fine there there's no mm. other there so there i mean the only platinum is the only card to which this like limitation applies right mm -hmm. like any other like obviously there's other cards you can't gain with this if they have debt cost or potion cost or whatever mm -hmm. but um yeah i don't i'm i'm like very curious why like why doesn't it just say gain an action or treasure like plus debt equal to its cost maybe the reason is because like it would be ambiguous how it interacted with debt if it didn't say up to something because like once you say up to eight, then it's like, well, okay, but that means the deck you can't gain the deck cost card. Because I mean that's true. The right? deck cost card, that, like, but but you have to if you didn't if you just said gain an action or treasure plus debt equal to its cost, then it would be unclear how it interacted with like a potion card or a deck card. Maybe that's the reason why it has to have some limitation. But then why it's up to eight? But why it's eight? Yeah. Yeah, like because. Maybe it's like, well, because in this set, Platinum doesn't exist, so we don't care about Platinum. I don't know. <laughs> Rip Platinum. <laughs> oh, but that means that there have to be... Right? 
not necessarily province exists but that pro- but, but province is get, not yeah that's true you can uh, get province. Hmm. yeah maybe it does mean that i don't know hmm. that's yeah interesting Curious. the I'm also trying to think, like, would it be broken to be able to just buy a platinum, like, in the opening with this? <laughs> I mean, you can, like, buy King's Courts with this, right? This is... You can seems... buy King's Courts, yeah, absolutely. Of course, you don't buy King's really... Court in the opening, but... I mean, yeah, obviously, but, uh, yeah, it seems pretty strong to me. Yeah, I... The credit... I agree. Like, this, like, I mean, okay, put aside, like, King's Court, platinum, whatever, and, like, you can just be, like... You know, I Five want cost, yeah. I want a recruiter. I want a junk dealer. Yeah. I want a witch. Yeah. You know, I want whatever. Like this is yeah. gonna just like let you do that. Yeah. You can just like turn any opening into like a five, yeah. like five slash you know nothing, essentially. Because um, you, regardless of whether you have a four three or a three four, you pay the two extra coins to get your five cost. So your your the net cost is seven, and then over the course of your four and your three, you pay that off. On a five two, you wouldn't go. Double five. Well, you could, yeah, but I'm just saying, like any mm. opening enables you to open like five, yeah. like a five and, a, and nothing with, yeah. with like, you know, with the net result being that you come out with no debt. So you like just shift your opening into a five two that yeah. doesn't take a two that doesn't take a two cost. Yeah. But yes, obviously, if you have a five two, you can open double five. So that's <laughs> that's that seems pretty good, mm-hmm. at least potentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. It does. But yeah, this I think it, yeah, this is also like. Yeah, quite strong. Uh, big impact on the opening. A lot of stuff to consider. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the like, and I mean, even as the game progresses, right? Like, I think you're gonna kind of end up using this a lot because you can basically just keep like, like it's 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 high tempo. You can keep floating coins into your next turn with your last buy. Like, assuming you have plus buy anyway, um, you can just you know, it's like, oh, I have. You know, I have seven coins by two fives, right? And the yeah. it only costs you like a net of two coins, so like you only you don't need to be getting like a ton of value out of the card that you're getting to for this to like kind of pay for itself that way. And like your your deck is going to ramp up faster that way, so you're going to be able to afford to to pay that off. So yeah, it seems. It seems very good to me. Very good. Yep. Yeah, just, 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 just uh, buy things on credit all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no, there, I can't see any problems with this. Yeah. In Dominion yeah. or in real life. No, no, none at all. <laughs> none at all. And again, to me, it just it feels like a super Dominion card. I can't really explain why, but it just feels correct. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it's 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 pretty similar in a way to like Borrow, for example. Like, I mean, it's it's mm-hmm. also quite different, but like it's like high high concept level. I think it's it's pretty similar. Mm-hmm. All right. So now, but I but I also think it's better than Borrow. Like the. Mm-hmm. more flexible like because it, it, it doesn't borrow it's like you got to be within one this like doesn't care and like minus the minus card token i think is worse yeah than Agreed. the the debt the debt yes yeah uh okay so practice three cost event you may play an action card from your hand twice huh all right i have questions about this but before i ask you questions the art Beautiful, no notes. I <laughs> feel like I should look into Klaus Stefan more because so far I I love this. Yeah. I love this art. It's uh yeah, it's really beautiful. Perfect. Yep, yep. I I I do think this one is clearly the best of these three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so my nice question is like this is an event, right? So you buy it in your buy phase, mm-hmm. but then you but then you like you play in your buy phase. You play an action card twice, mm-hmm. and you have to have it in hand. Like mm-hmm. it's it's not a card that you have played that turn. Right. Okay. Can you? So it's like toil, but stronger. Mm. But also like doesn't. I think toil refunds the buy, um, and this doesn't. So, can you can you explain to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's like you know, you you know, it's a it's a village effect essentially, where you you 
you like you can't play all of your stuff because you don't have enough actions so you can buy practice and play something mm -hmm. or you just want to play the card twice and you don't have a throne effect but like mm -hmm. it's if it's worth three coins and a buy to play it twice you know mm -hmm. for whatever reason so like mm -hmm. you know if you like simple example you're on a board with which you have your witch like turn three and maybe you don't really care about like buying something you just want to junk your opponent so you don't play your witch because you, you, you have like witch the state mm -hmm, three copper mm -hmm, you play your three mm -hmm. copper and you practice your witch and you it, mm -hmm. it gets played twice you give mm -hmm. out two curses you get farther through your shuffle you don't get to buy anything but like that could just be yeah, worthwhile yeah. like by itself yeah i don't think that's like the most exciting use of this but i think it, it that's that sort of thing will definitely come up and it's also like when you draw stuff dead you could theoretically practice them yeah 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 i think that's the that's going to be the more common case mm -hmm. um than what i just described but um like you know you can also like potentially um well okay so clearly the most important interaction with this is souk because you can play all your treasures and then you practice your souk, it refunds the buy and it gives you more money than it would have if you played it in your action phase. Beautiful. Yeah. And if, if you have multiple souks in hand, you can just practice them both and you're still getting, like, you're, you're net gaining mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, practice your souks. <laughs> <laughs> practice your souks, everyone. You heard it here first. <laughs> um, most payload cards are not going to be giving you enough payload for that to like make sense like you know if you think about like a i don't know like your standard like you know like sacred grove or whatever is like sort of an average case of like you know a mm -hmm. payload card that gives you a good amount of money right um so it gives you three coins and a buy and you play this and then you play your sacred grove twice it refunds the buy like it would actually more than refunds the buy i guess but like you were already going to get a buy from from playing normally so like if you could have played it normally like you don't really get much value out of this mostly what you get is you get to double the boons but then like your opponent also gets to like the, the extra crack of the boons yeah like, you know and similar like you know courtier or like wine merchant it's like you get okay wine merchant gives you more coins but you also have to get the wine merchant off the mat so like it's if you want to do that it still is basically break even so most of the time that sort of thing isn't going to be what you're going to use this for i don't think that's why Souk is notable is because, like, Souk is, like, absolutely is going to just be way better yeah. that way. Yeah. Um, so I think it's more going to be the... Yeah, it's more going to be the case where you you didn't have the terminal space. And, like, the if, you're, if your terminal payload has plus buy, the fact that the payload itself will refund the buy will still obviously be helpful. And, like, even if even if it's not, like, a three... Like, even if it's, like, nomads, right? You, you buy this and you play your nomads twice and you still net a coin... So it's still like worth doing, even if it's not that exciting. Um, assuming you can afford to do it in the first place. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like you can also use this for game and play stuff. Potentially, it like it might be tricky, um, like to have enough, like like this probably isn't going to come up too often because you're going to need like potentially a lot of money and buys to do it. But like if you have like you know, uh, you have like a gainer, you have a draw card, you can like, you know, play your gainer, you like can like practice, like like Horn of Plenty or something, and you like play the Horn of Plenty and you gain something, and then you like practice the draw card, draw what you gained with the Horn of Plenty, and then practice the thing that you gained mm -hmm. with the Horn of Plenty, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Like how often that's going to be relevant? I suspect not very often, but it might be something to look out for with pileouts, like it, this like potentially enables you to increase your gains yeah. or convert convert buys into like if you have excess buys and you have like a moderate amount of money but not enough like but if you have like the right gainers like on the board then like mm. maybe you can like transform mm. like basically I think increase the, how much money you effectively have by like you know it costs you three it's kind of kind of like mirror a little bit that way like where you you're paying three coins to gain hopefully something that costs more than three and so that's increasing your effective payload i don't think it's going to come up super often but maybe <laughs> yeah we'll see 
Yeah. So, um... Uh, was that it for today? That is... Well, I mean, there's also Donald X's comments about uh, the events. Okay. He says, continue as a Villa family event that... <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> that also gains a cheap action and plays it. Maybe that will save your turn. Or maybe it will just be amazing. Like, yeah, 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 <laughs> he yeah. didn't say that. That was my editorialization. Mm -hmm. uh, um, credit lets you buy something using debt. Turn one prints. Yeah, well, maybe not that, but okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. It is possible if that's what you want to do. Don't do it, but it's possible. <laughs> maybe you really want to get rid of that necropolis. Maybe with inheritance. Or maybe inherited. Oh, yeah, I meant inherited. Yes, thank you. I meant inherited. Ah, okay. <laughs> if you inherit a really good card, then by all means. <laughs> Open with the, yeah. Hey, maybe you really want plus actions, and you're like, we just need to get this Necropolis Prince. <laughs> There's a first just time for everything. hope that they collide. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have save, too, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, practice simply plays a card twice, handy with plenty of things. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I believe it, yeah. Did we talk about the artist art? Huh? Oh, no. I don't think we did. Okay, we have to do that. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, so um, I don't like the color scheme. Uh, I like the composition. Uh, ah, that's where the cat is from. Okay. <laughs> do you see the cat? There's a black cat there. Mm -hmm. um, I... I'm confused why the canvas is empty. Um, We're just getting started. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, so I, I do like the motif. Uh, I don't like the color scheme. I think you. Know, I think the real reason the canvas is empty is because like whoever, like the uh, what is this person's name? Okay, I'm not. What whatever. Um, it's pretty small. Osamu Inoue. Uh. Anyway, they only got paid for one piece of art, not two. Mm, that's true, that's true, that's true. I see. Yeah. Okay, just wanted to um, add these thoughts for yeah. completion. I so. think this, this art is a downgrade from like the poet art. It's like similar like high concept, yeah. right? It's like there's a, yes. a woman using a brush to do artistic stuff. Yeah. But the like... The background isn't as nice. Like there's not like the the figure is is smaller, mm -hmm. so like less like detailed and less compelling. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. Yeah. And then I had some closing thoughts, just in general, and like we talked about this yesterday, but um, I feel like so far from what we've seen, this feels like very very exciting in a way that. Um, some past expansions have not felt like allies kind of sticks out there where this just feels yeah I don't know I'm just like super excited about this this expansion in a way I haven't been in in a while I yeah I can definitely see that I don't I don't know I don't remember like hmm my my excitement about the these things is often more about like the opportunity to do this is like think about like what's being added and why and whether it's good and stuff like more so than like like the the like actual playing not that i'm not excited to play with the cards but like in the moment what I'm excited about is like like you know when they're revealed is like okay mm. like that thinking about it mm. and then like I will be excited to play with them when I go to play with them, sort of, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So and of I course, like, you have a different perspective on this, right? You have, like, yeah, your whole degree and stuff. And <laughs> to me, it's more like I have to, like, read it and, like, try to figure out what that means. But, like, and, like, you can talk about it and that's interesting. But, like, really, I will only understand if I, like, finally get to play. Well, I, and I think that's true for... <laughs> that's true for everyone to some extent right like i'm definitely gonna have a better idea of what i think about these cards after i play with them than i do mm. before i play with them yeah but it's still fun to try to to think through like what it is like before i play with them but in any case like my point is i don't remember like i don't remember thinking like oh 
I'm not excited about these allies cards or I'm not excited about these plunder cards or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's hard for me to separate that from Interesting. Okay. how I feel about the cards yeah. now. That makes sense. Um, yes. But that being said, I mean, these definitely do, this definitely does seem like, like a cool expansion and I'm definitely, you know, will, 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 I'm looking forward to having the opportunity to actually play with the cards, which will happen this weekend. Um, That's right, God. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, the, uh, was I excited to play with the other cards from the other expansions? I assume I was like, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I remember having strong reactions to at least some of them. Like I remember seeing Frigate and being like, Oh my God. <laughs> 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 and Warlord. Um, but yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't really specifically remember like, too much about my initial impressions as opposed to like what i you know how i think about the cards now oh that reminds me for artist i feel like like rotating split piles travelers that that's gonna be great for artist (laughs) all these (laughs) the cards like travelers um... yeah maybe the split the split piles yeah more so i think or like black market yeah 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 black market is like it's like you know you know you're not getting a second copy of this <laughs> that's true but um, then like everything where you only have one right or like be it a champion be it a prince or whatever like but you, I mean, artists yeah. will love all these i mean you can cards. get multiple princes champion it would be pretty strange to get multiple you champions. can get multiple you champions. you're allowed to you're allowed to <laughs> there's no there's there hasn't been any reason to except that now um with the like actions as buys thing there is a reason to wow. <laughs> you, you can have your champion be your plus your second champion mm-hmm. like increase your buys even more i mean realistically one would imagine that the first champion would suffice for that. <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, we're not here to tell you not to get a second champion. <laughs> no. You do you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess if you play with knights, you know, those could, True. could be in play. Yeah. But yeah. They'll, all, they'll all die anyway, so. Yeah. Well, you can only play so many of the castles. Play two. Yeah. <laughs> and they're both terminal and one of them might trash itself <laughs> i'm trying to i'm trying to hold a candle for artist yeah i don't know i mean it, it is one of those things where it's like you know every time one of these cards that's like based around uniques comes up it's like well menagerie Oh, it always finds a way. So this card should be good too, right? But I don't, I don't know how. Does Menagerie always find a way? I mean, it doesn't actually always find yeah. a way, but it, it is, it is often enough. You mean surprising how often it does? Mm. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's, yeah. Like, I, I don't, I don't think. I don't know. Eight dead is a lot more than three coins. <laughs> so. Yeah. Like, Menagerie doesn't always work, but it's okay because, you know, you can get a whole bunch of them and, like, whatever. Like, but this card, it's like, you get, like, one artist and it's like, okay, I invest a lot in this. And then if it doesn't work out, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, that can happen with City Quarter too, but it usually doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Fun. Fun things. Fun. Uh, fun up ahead. I'm very much. Like looking forward to seeing how cr- many crazy shenanigans you people can get up to with continue. Seems bonkers. Maybe we should watch some of the the playtesters videos. Maybe so. Maybe so. But in the meantime, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye.